I believed very confidently that God exists. And I believed very confidently that there was a religion out there that he wouldn't create us and leave us alone. That there was a religion out there. I just needed to find it. And enough study means I'll find it. So that was my very overconfident attitude. And uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for that. You know, sometimes yeah. too much confidence is... Uh, it doesn't work but in that case it worked it was a blessing for me but in a way that it was confidence in god because yes it's knowing that correct. he created me correct he's not going to leave me astray you know he wouldn't have left human beings astray so that's that's great that was a gift it Mashallah. was you're right yeah. it was that's what it was yeah. you're right and so i embarked on what i called my search and i started reading and studying all these different religions i thought i'm going to leave no religion unstudied except for one which i was certain was not worth reading which of course i'm sure you've guessed is islam <laughs> really wow yeah. what do i want to read about islam for that's the religion where all they they cover women in blankets and put them in closets that's what i used to say so i did study and i actually almost became a buddhist i was very enthralled with buddhism i read a book called zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance it's actually a wonderful book <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is a beautiful religion. And the reason I loved it, what I loved about it, was the tazgit in nafs. So the real work that seemed to be taking place on the self. Mm -hmm. And again, I went to a professor. Like, that was, um, it was really sort of an academic road for me to mm -hmm. a degree. I found a professor who had a Buddhist club at the university. And I attended one meeting with them. And I just, I left the meeting with a realization that while the tazgit in nafs was very real, it wasn't for God. It was for the nafs. And in my view, if I'm going to do something for my nafs, why am I going to, like, didn't make sense. Why am I going to purify myself for myself? I should, if I'm not going to purify myself for God, I'll just give myself whatever it wants. Right. You know, so I didn't become a Buddhist in that moment, alhamdulillah, and continued on my path. But I, by, by December, I was kind of, in my impatient seven, I was 18 by now, in my impatient 18-year-old self, I was like, why haven't I found a religion yet? <laughs> and of course, other people spend a lifetime in these things. But to me, I'm like, two and a half months? That's ridiculous. What's going on? And so I was really, uh, I was, I don't even know the word. I was in this sort of state of, of frustration. That's a good word, frustration. And there were different international people on campus. And remember I said that I was really interested in other worlds and other countries and other cultures. And so there was a young man who was from another country. Almost, he, was, he was from a Muslim country. Not that I knew that. But we were talking about some intellectual thing. Actually, we were arguing, and I wasn't even, like, thinking about it. I, kept, I was thinking about my own religious struggles. So I paused the conversation. I asked him, what religion are you anyway? And he said in a really funny American accent. Oh, I'm Muslim. I'll never forget that funny American <laughs> accent because it sounded to me like he was really trying to be, you know, American about this and cool. And I laughed at him. I said, oh, you're one of those people who put women in closets and cover them in blankets. <laughs> he was really offended. And oh, so wow. the blessing of him being offended was that he now wanted to tell me how he wasn't that kind of person. And that was my first exposure to Islam, actually, this really funny conversation where I was telling someone, you know, you don't know anything. and uh, If you don't mind me asking, when is this? Like, I'm just trying to... December 1984. In the 80s, right? Nin December 1984. Wow, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. And that conversation then, I mean, there are more details to the story, but just it turned into me really finding... It, it turned into a conversation about hijab because I accused them of being people who... of people who put women in closets and cover them with a scarf, mm -hmm. uh, a blanket. <laughs> and so it turned into a conversation about hijab, and I left that conversation knowing nothing about Islam, but thinking that hijab was a really cool idea. 